move on to our special test for the ankle. One of the first tests I like to start with is the anterior drawer test. This test is actually evaluating the ATFL. So the way that this test is performed, you have one hand that's grabbing over top of the tibia and the fibula and stabilizing, and your other hand is wrapping around the, the posterior calcaneus with your thumb in the front. In sports medicine, we really like to use C's and C shapes for our examination. So this is, the, this is what you want to do for this. With a good grasp on the, on the ankle and the foot, you're going to apply an anterior force. And what you're looking for is you're looking for laxity and you're looking for clicking and shifting of the joint. Remember to always compare it to the contralateral side, especially if that contralateral side has never had an injury to it before. It can really give you a good baseline as to where the patient usually is in regards to the integrity of that joint. The next test I like to go into is a Taylor tilt test, and this test evaluates the CFL. In order to do this from this exact same position, I have a good grasp over the tibia and the fibula. My other hand, again as a C, comes around. I have my index finger just distal to the lateral malleolus to allow me to feel for any motion there whenever I'm performing the Taylor tilt evaluation. And so from here, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to invert I'm evaluating for any laxity in that distribution and of course compared to the contralateral side. The next test I'm going to go into is called the Kleiger test or the forced external rotation test. For this test what we're doing is we're evaluating the integrity of the AITFL ligament and the syndesmosis. So this test is very valuable for folks whenever you are suspicious for a high ankle sprain. You put the patient up into a forced dorsiflexion position, and then you forcefully evert them. What you're looking for is you're looking for reproduction of pain in this distribution where typically folks will have injury due to a high ankle sprain. The last test is going to be the squeeze test. And this is a test that we use to evaluate folks who are suspected of having a high ankle injury. The way that this is performed is you make sure that you get a good grasp over the tibia and the fibula, usually about mid leg here, and you apply the squeezing force and you can actually apply this going down the leg. What you're doing whenever you're applying this force is you're working with levers. So when I apply here, I'm actually splaying out or putting a force that's splaying out the tibia and fibula from one another, therefore putting stress on that syndesmosis that runs in between them. So if you have a positive squeeze test, that means that uh, somebody has pain with this maneuver and likely they have some injury to their syndesmosis. Next, we're going to talk about the Thompson test, which is a test to evaluate the integrity of the Achilles tendon. So first, you wanna make sure that you have your patient prone on an examination table with her foot and ankle off the edge. For demonstration purposes, we have our model here today leaning down on one of our stools uh, with her foot and ankle hanging off the side so that we can perform the same test. In order to perform the Thompson test with the patient nice and relaxed, you're going to grab the central area of the gastrocnemius and you're actually gonna squeeze. What you're looking for here is you're looking for this little bit of plantar flexion that occurs with that squeezing of the gastrocnemius. As long as you're getting that plantar flexion, if you were to perform this test and the patient weren't to have any of that plantar flexion, then you get concerned about the integrity of the Achilles uh, and the Achilles no longer doing its job, which means that it might be injured or ruptured.